guys, this is Abby reporting from my house in my very own kitchen here. Um, I hope you all are doing really well. I miss everybody from my Sweet Adventures baking class at the Southeast Duban County Library, so I thought I would do a video today from home that you guys can try at home, um, and I thought we should make some no-knead bread. It's really simple. It's only four ingredients. You guys probably already have the ingredients at home. Um, and I thought you could try it at home and then show me your results. Um, like I said, I miss everybody from my baking class. I hope you guys are all doing well at home right now and getting to do some fun baking and cooking, different things at home. I'm certainly doing a lot of baking here, um, trying some new recipes. But I thought this recipe is really simple. Um, it's actually the first bread recipe that I've ever tried. Um, and I liked it so much, I thought I just kept doing it and I thought, why not share it during this time where everyone's home and has enough time to try it. All right, so before we start, I want you guys to go wash your hands um, and I will meet you at the next step. All right, guys, now that your hands are washed, we are ready to get started. So I am going to tell you what you need for this no need bread recipe. Um, we are going to need a pretty large bowl. Um, this is the size I'm using because the, the bread is going to rise. So you want one that's pretty large. We are going to need a one cup measuring cup. We are going to need some little measuring spoons. The one we're actually going to need is the one-fourth teaspoon. That's the one we really need for this recipe. Um, we are going to need a little piece of parchment paper. Um, make sure it's parchment paper and not wax paper. You don't want to use wax paper um, in the oven because it will melt. So make, so make sure it's parchment paper. You are going to need some plastic wrap. Um, if you don't have plastic wrap, you can just use a clean towel. It's what we're going to lay over the bowl to let the bread proof. I use plastic wrap. It just kind of seals everything out that's in the air. So that's what I like to use. Um, and we are going to need an oven safe, like a Dutch oven with a lid. It's got to have a lid on it. So this is the one I use. It's a nice cast iron, kind of a heavy duty um, Dutch oven. Um, and like I said, it needs to have a lid. So make sure you have something like that. It's got to be able to withstand really high heat, 500 degree heat. So that's what we need um, supply-wise. We also need our ingredients. I'm going to put all this stuff aside for right now and show you guys what ingredients we need. Um, we are going to need some all-purpose flour. I'm using unbleached all-purpose flour. You can use whatever you have. I've used pretty much every kind of flour to make this before. Um, this recipe is really forgiving, so whatever kind of flour you have, you can use. Um, we are going to need some salt, and we are going to need a little bit of yeast. I am using this Bread Machine Instant Rapid Rise Yeast. Um, it works really well for making bread. I've always had good results with it, so that's what I'm going to be using. And we are going to need one and a half cups of just regular old water. Um, like I said, you probably have most of these things at home already. It's a really simple recipe for easy ingredients. Um, so now I think we are ready to get started. So I'm going to take my large clean bowl. First we are going to add our dry ingredients. Um, those of you from my baking class know we do the dry ingredients and then we do the wet ingredients. So we're going to start with our dry ingredients, which in this case is going to be the flour, the yeast, and the salt. So we need three cups of the all-purpose flour. So I'm going to go ahead and measure that. Got one, two, and three. Get that in there. Um, you're going to want a little bit of extra flour to save for the end for when we kind of turn the dough out. Um, you just want to sprinkle some, some flour down. So make sure you have a little bit of extra flour for later. But for the actual bread, just three cups. All right, after that we are going to do one-fourth a teaspoon of our yeast. So here's my little one-fourth teaspoon. We're going to open up our yeast. I do a pretty, you know good one-fourth of a teaspoon. Um, I, a little extra is not going to hurt this, but I think it'll make it rise even more. So we're going to do one-fourth a teaspoon, kind of sprinkle it over there. And then we are going to do one and one-fourth teaspoon of salt. So I need my one teaspoon. Here's my salt. We're going to do one 
and gotta find my one fourth and one fourth. And now, if you have kids at home, or if you are a kid at home and you want to get your hands dirty, this is the part where you can you can either use a whisk or you can just use your fingers and just kind of incorporate it, all the dry ingredients together, just like this. Nothing fancy. Just give it a good mix, just like that. Make sure everything's pretty evenly distributed throughout there. That looks pretty good. All right, and now for our wet ingredients, which in this case is just water. We are going to, I'm actually gonna make a little bit of a well um, kind of inside here, just like that, nothing fancy. Just a little bit of a divot that we can pour our water right into. And like I said, I have one and a half cups of water here. Um, and I will make sure that the recipe is posted with this video so you guys will have all the measurements you need. But one and a half cups of water, I am just going to pour it in here. And again, if you wanna get your hands dirty, go for it. If you wanna use a spatula, you can. I'm just gonna use my hands and show you guys. You're gonna just wanna hydrate, make sure all of that dough is nice and hydrated. Make sure there's no dry pieces. Um, and again, this is a no need dough, so we're really just giving this, we're not gonna you know, do anything too fancy. We're just kinda of giving this a nice stir, making sure all of the dry ingredients get some moisture to them and are nice and hydrated. And yeah, you're gonna have some stick to your hands. It's, it's gonna happen, but not a big deal. You can see there's still some um, dry ingredients in the bottom, so you're gonna take your wet dough and just kinda smush it around. Make sure you get all those dry bits in there. Um, Kids really like doing this part. It's it's fun. It feels pretty cool. All right, so that's pretty good. Try to get as much of it off of your hands as you can. Um, give it one more little mix. All right, and you're going to have this kind of shaggy, not very pretty looking dough yet, but um, it will make for a beautiful loaf of bread. So we're going to leave this. Um, you can leave it overnight, somewhere warm, um, covered. So like I said before, I'm going to cover mine with some plastic wrap, but if you have a clean towel at home, that will work well also. And you want to leave it somewhere warm. Um, if you have pets somewhere where your pets won't get into it, um, <laughs> we have that problem here. <laughs> so, I'm, like I said, I'm going to use, my hands are a little dirty right now, but I'm just going to use some regular old plastic wrap, cover it like this, make sure it's nice and sealed off. And uh, like I said, you can do this overnight. I'm doing it in the morning. I'll probably check back in about eight hours tonight and go from there. But um, yeah, if you want to leave it overnight, you will wake up to hopefully a dough that is nice and risen. Um, and then I will show you guys what we're going to do from there. So easy enough. Um, good luck. I'll see you soon. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back now with our proofed dough. Um, before we get started handling the dough, I do want to remind you to wash your hands again. Um, but we're going to take a peek at our proofed dough. I kept it really nice and warm next to our um, little heater in the kitchen. So we're going to take a look at it now. I can tell by looking through the plastic wrap, it looks about ready. Um, let's take a look. Oops. There we go. So that is pretty much what we are looking for. You can see, if you look really closely, all the air bubbles in there. Um, it looks like it has about doubled in size. Everything looks really nice and hydrated. And you can kind of give it the little jiggle test. <laughs> That's another way you know it's really hydrated. There's air in it and it's ready to go. Um, so before we shape our dough, um, we have to move on to, we're going to set that aside for right now. We are going to do an important step, which is um, preheating our oven to 500 degrees. So I'm gonna... All right, we are at 500 degrees, um, and now we are going to put in our cast iron Dutch oven. Um, again, you're going to want something that can withstand the heat of 500 degrees, so just make sure the, uh, the um, container you're using is heat friendly. So I'm going to put this in our oven with the lid on. You do want the lid to heat up too. We're going to preheat this entire thing before we put the bread in it. So this goes in and um, this is kind of like a, a bonus step. Um, if you really want nice crispy crust on your bread, you can put in a pan of water, about an inch of water. I'm just using an old cake pan. Um, the steam that this water will make 
helps to make a nice crusty crust on the bread when we eventually um, get to the step where we take the lid off of the bread. Um, so we're going to let that all get preheated and now we are going to get ready to shape our dough. Okay, so the oven is preheating to 500 degrees and now we are going to do the fun part which is shaping our dough. Um, again, this, in, this recipe does not require any kneading of the dough, we're just going to kind of shape it into a tight ball. Um, and then when the oven is preheated, um, we're going to take out our cast iron Dutch oven, put, put our little handy parchment paper in the bottom of that so it doesn't stick. Uh, we're going to pop the dough in with the lid on and go from there. But first, it's time to shape it. So, before we do anything, remember earlier in the video I said reserve a little bit of flour to put down for when you turn your dough out. So we're just going to take a nice sprinkle of this and just kind of put it on the surface in front of us. This way the dough um, won't stick to the surface because it's a very wet dough right now. It got fully hydrated. So we're going to use plenty of flour, kind of put it down. Then we are going to take our dough, very jiggly dough, nice and airy. Um, and actually, before we do that, you can even put some flour on your hands too. This will help from um, the dough sticking to your hands. So we got plenty of flour there. We're going to take our dough, oh yeah, and we are going to plop it down on this floured surface. There we go. It's a little extra in there. All right. And yes, it's probably going to stick to your hands, but we're going to shape it a little bit um, and it'll kind of come together. I'm going to add a little bit more flour to my hands right now. Just keep your flour handy, so if you need to put more under the surface around your hands, it's right there. All right, so again, I'm going to actually take some more flour, dust the top of our dough like this, and just start to shape it. This is a really, this is a really nice, light dough. Um, again, we're not going to knead it. I'm going to do a little bit of like a pull, uh, a stretch and fold method. You're just going to take it and kind of form it into a ball by doing this. And this, the top of this is actually going to be the bottom of our loaf. It's very wet. We are going to add a little bit more flour to that. Like this. And like this. And like this. And we're going to kind of make this a nice, tight loaf, adding more flour as we need. This dough feels very nice and soft. It's very relaxing to do this. Kind of bunching it. I'm going to put some more flour down and turn this over like this. Um, at this stage, you can keep using your hands if you want, or if you have a bench scraper, that works really well too. Um, and with this, you can kind of just tuck the dough into a nice ball. You really want the top to be nice and smooth, kind of create that surface tension on the top and that'll lead to a really nice crust. Um, if, you don't, if you don't have one of these and you're just using your hand, just kind of shape it, tuck it, and turn it. Again, get nice, lots of nice flour down there. Kind of tuck it, tuck it, fold it, and turn it and just make a nice smooth ball just like this. If you need to sprinkle some more flour on top, you can. Just like this. All right, perfect. All right, so at this point, we are just going to wait for our oven to finish preheating, and then we are ready to add our loaf um, into the hot preheated Dutch oven with your parchment paper. So have your parchment paper handy, because um, you're going to, going to want to do the next step um, pretty quick. So we're good to go, just got to wait for the, the 500 degree preheat um, and then I'll show you what to do next. Alright, so the oven beeper just went off. We are preheated at 500 and ready to go. Dough is shaped. We've got our parchment nearby. Um, before we open the oven and take out our blazing hot Dutch oven, I want to remind all of you um, two things. One, please use pot holders. Um, or oven mitts when taking out the Dutch oven. It's extremely hot. Um, and when you take the lid off, it's extremely hot. Also, because we had the water down there steaming, um, it's probably pretty steamy in there right now. So when you open the oven, um, just 
step back for a second. You don't want your face right there because if steam comes out, you don't want the steam to hit your face. I've made that mistake. It hurts really bad. So just kind of open the oven and step back for a second um, and then use your oven mitts and take out the Dutch oven. Um, so that's what I'm going to do right now. We are going to open this. Yep, and there goes some steam. When that kind of clears out, we are going to pretty quickly take out our Dutch oven, which again is at 500 degrees, very hot. So oven mitt, take the lid off, put that aside. Um, now we are going to put in our little piece of handy dandy parchment paper. We're going to put it right down. If you don't have parchment paper, you can always take a nice uh, handful of flour and kind of scatter that at the bottom. It's just so the dough won't stick to the bottom um, of the Dutch oven. Um, sometimes when I put the parchment in, I do a little bit of flour on the bottom anyway, just as kind of a backup. Alright, so that's good to go. Parchment, a um, little dusting of flour, hot um, Dutch oven. I'm going to take my dough scraper and just kind of bunch this up, round it out, shape it for just one more second, one last time, and then very, just using my hands, get a little more flour in my hands, using my hands I am going to swiftly just plop it right in carefully, make sure your arms don't hit the side. Um, and this is the important part, you kind of get in the groove sometimes and you want to just put the lid back on like without thinking. Again, use your oven mitt, it's extremely hot, put the lid back on. Another oven mitt, we are going to open the oven door. Again, kind of step back a little bit. Just watch your face, I can see all the steam in there. Um, but that steam will help us out later when we take the lid off and it'll help make our crust nice and crusty. So that's going in, lid on at 500 for 30 minutes. So we're gonna let that go 30 minutes. Um, we will check back in with you after 30 minutes. See you then. Okay. That is our 30 minute timer. We are going to open up our blazing hot oven. Again, pot holders, please use them. Um, and take a step back also because it, again, it'll be really steamy in there. Um, so same as before, carefully open the oven. Um, we are going to take, I'm actually gonna take out the whole Dutch oven, take the lid off with a pot holder. Um, we'll get a quick shot of what the bread looks like after 30 minutes with the lid on and then I'm gonna stick it back in the oven with no lid for 15 minutes um, and then we will check in with you after that but for right now now this is kind of the nerve-wracking part like what does it look like so we're going to carefully open up the oven step back watch out for the steam there it goes all right I'm gonna take out my Dutch oven carefully put it there we're gonna close this up again really quick with your oven mitt moment of truth we're gonna look at our bread oh my gosh it puffed up so nice. It actually has a nice crust on it already. How happy I am. <laughs> I'm so happy, sorry. <laughs> All right, so um, with the lid off, we are going to put it back in the oven for another 15 minutes. Um, it already has kind of a brown crust to it, so I, I might not even go 15 minutes, but we're, I'll, we'll check it in 15 minutes. Um, All right, so I'm gonna carefully open the oven up again. Again, watch your face. Pot holders and Dutch oven back in, push it in. All right, set your timers for 15 minutes. I will see you then. All right, guys, I am about to check my bread. Um, I decided since my loaf was already a little bit brown and crusty when I took the lid off, I'm gonna check it after 10 minutes. Um, if it needs more time, we can do that. But with my particular oven, um, it got crusty on the outside already, so I'm gonna go with 10 minutes. Um, but look, like, every oven's different, so um, it's really up to you. So i like going to open the oven, and again, use my oven mitts, take a step back because there will be steam, and we are going to reveal our no-need bread. So, here's that. Take a step back. Okay, here's our moment of truth. Oh, yay! <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, I'm going to close this back up and I'm going to flip my oven off really quick. That is our finished bread, you guys. I'm really happy with the results. Um, it's got a nice brown, crusty crust, um, some little flaky bits. It's going to be good. It's really, really hot right now. What I'm actually going to do is take my little spatula and just kind of pop it on this little cooling rack right here so it kind of cools. But that is our finished bread. It was really easy, four simple ingredients. Um, I mean, I really hope you guys get good results like this at home. I'm really 
always pleased with the results of this recipe. Um, so we're going to let this cool and then we're going to come back and cut into it when it's cool. Alright guys, our bread has been cooling for a while. I don't know about you, I can't wait any longer. I need to cut into this <laughs> and see how it tastes. <laughs> so um, before I do that though, I want, I want you guys to try this at home too, but listen carefully. It's nice and crusty. And if you tap the bottom, it almost sounds kind of hollow, which is a good thing. That means there's lots of air bubbles on the inside. Um, it'll be a nice light, hopefully nice chewy on the inside um, loaf of bread. So now, like I said, I can't wait any longer. I'm going to cut into this thing. Um, we waited about an hour. Um, it depends on your loaf of bread when you guys are ready to cut into it. But I, I don't know about you, I love warm bread. So I'm going to take a, uh, this is something for grown-ups to do, not kids at home. This is for grown-ups. Um, we're going to take a nice serrated knife and cut into our bread. And you can hear the crust going right through there. Oh yeah, there you go, and you see there's some nice air bubbles in there, and there is still some steam coming off. Um, probably could have waited a little bit longer to cut into it, but like I said, I'm impatient, I love bread, so <laughs> had to do it. Alright you guys, well that is our finished loaf. Um, I really would love to see pictures that you guys do at home. Um, but for right now, I'm going to try this and I will check back in with you. All right, you guys, that was our fun filled day of no need bread making. <laughs> um, I hope you had as much fun as I did. I'm glad that the results turned out great. Tastes amazing. I hope yours at home does too. Let me know um, in the comments how your loaves turned out. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to help you. Um, but get creative with it. Um, this, I just made a really plain loaf at home. If you guys want to try some different things, um, I've tried rosemary in the bread, um, in the past. That's worked really well. You could probably do some cinnamon, some raisin, any spices or herbs you have at home. Um, try some different things. Let me know how it works out for you. Um, and hopefully this will be the first of many videos to come. I had a really good time today making this bread with you guys. Um, I will see you soon, I hope. Uh, stay safe and healthy at home. Wash your hands, and I will see you soon. Have a great day.